Welcome to another episode of the Headlight Restoration Pro, where I'll be showing you how to take headlights like this and turn them into something more like this. Beautiful. Crystal clear. Perfect. Better perfect. than the day it rolled off the lot. Stay tuned. Now let's get down to business. This is a 2013 Infiniti G37 Type S, and this is one of the most uh, asked for cars for me to do in my DMs. And I see why, it's, uh, it's actually a very difficult headlight. I've done many of them. Um, for some reason, a lot of people are in the DMs and they're asking when I'm gonna do one. And uh, just so happened I came up on this nice one. Uh, but you see all these places I'm touching here. This is what makes it a really difficult headlight. And you see the excessive taping off I've done because it's a super nice car. And the shape of the light uh, pretty much all the way around it are danger points. Danger points are um, points that pretty much your sandpaper is going to hit quite a bit. Um, so you had to do extra tape off uh, some of these areas that butt up near the light. I have put, you know, five, six layers of tape on just to be safe, uh, especially when you're working with a show car like this. Uh, this is a garage keeper. This was actually um, somebody who was deceased and their partner wanted to uh, keep up their car and wanted to get the lights taken care of. So I took that really serious and did a stand up job for them. Uh, but it's a very difficult light. It's rather large and it has all these turns and dips, especially at that top part. And at the bottom part, it is heavily indented. Uh, this is one of the ways that I uh, gauge pricing is the size and difficulty as far as the indention. And you see that spot right there. Uh, if you don't notice it right here, I'm kind of tilting uh, the drill to get in there. I'm tilting it to get into those tight areas. That's one way to do it if it works. Uh, if it didn't, uh, you know, you could take off the pad and get in there with just the interface pad. And this area right here, you can't really see it on camera, but it's very difficult and it has kind of a, I don't know, like a uh, engraving uh, dugout area. It's kind of like if I had to think about it, it's like a U or a W. It goes in one angle and out another angle. And uh, you got to be really gentle on that area because it's pretty much the uh, showpiece of the light. Uh, it sticks out a lot. You got to, you know, really handle that area and uh, caution and, you know, baby it. Um, but as you see here, you have to really keep a steady hand on this light. You have to, you know, you're, you're pretty much barely touching everything around the headlight, all the areas around the headlight, but like I said, uh, certain lights like this, I will tape off excessively, you know, uh, probably about, you know, anywhere between four and six, seven uh, layers of tape that butt up in the area where uh, the light meets the bumper and surrounding car area, just to not damage the paint in any kind of way. I also did an excessive uh, layering out, which is just one layer, and it's basically for uh, precaution. Uh, if it throws you, these lights will have a propensity to throw the drill. Also, uh, when I'm sealing, I don't have to worry about overspray on this uh, guy's awesome uh, paint job, which, uh, by the way, um, I did uh, more than just headlight restoration on this light. Uh, I also did a polish buff and wax and clay bar on this vehicle. Um, you know, I am a full uh, restoration service, and... Uh, you know, I do all the stuff detailers do, just a little bit in excess. I did scratch removal and some water uh, spot removal on here, some black trim um, restoration on this vehicle. Did a lot of stuff on this vehicle. Um, I'll show you some pictures of that later. Um, but yeah, you pretty much approach this as a regular light. Uh, I would use what I call the double stuff method. Um, but it's not really necessary on this light because the humps and lumps are um, pretty much so broad uh, that you don't need them. Uh, you know, the, the flat surface of the regular one pad reaches it. Um, but 
these lights are very attractive looking lights uh, when they're you know up to par there are um, certain lights that are prone to go bad and uh, this is one of them if you can kind of guess from the way it looks uh, it's really exposed to the Sun uh, what I have uh, been calling or I coined uh, forward facing which means it's always facing the Sun even the Sun goes up or Sun goes down but this is how you really get into those corners where your drill goes or your um, your three inch pad won't reach you gotta uh, take off the interface pad with you know the p500 which i'm doing here and pretty much use your finger pressure to kind of mold it into place and then get it that way because if you try to get in there too hard with you know either one of those areas or those sensitive areas on this light too hard with the drill you're going to end up leaving marks that you can't get out or that you're going to spend a really long time trying to get out and remove before your final step or you know if you miss it it's you're gonna have to do it over which would suck on this light but hand sanding uh, gets it at these points and um, a lot of people I get a, I get some comments they're like oh my god you said polishing but you polished and it's like come on like what like I said my style is you know in my ideology and anything I do in life especially something I want to excel at uh, like my business, like headlight restoration, I use um, pretty much like a MMA mentality. Like, you know, mixed martial arts is a bunch of different disciplines, you know, versus, uh, say, boxing or kickboxing or whatever. Uh, it's just one discipline. Uh, I try to use the best out of every discipline whether it be wet sanding whether it be polishing whether it be dry sanding whether it be using pads or not using pads I, I you know I kind of experimented with everything and um, I try to use the best out of everything not everything is all bad some things have uh, its place okay you just got to know where they go but as you see here I'm starting out with the p800 on the interface pad because it's fresh on these hard to reach spots you always want to start on you know start with the fresh pad why because you have to do less work when it's fresh you know you got you don't have to sit there and grind and grind on those hard parts like this long you just hit it real quick because it's a fresh disc or a fresh pad um, if you were to do this at the end of sanding everything else, it would be, you know, damn near dead and you'd be, you know, beating a dead horse in those corners and those hard to reach uh, spots. So it works out that you do it first, you know, because like I said, it's fresh. And uh, I really enjoy doing these lights because uh, they're just beautifully shaped and on the inside of the lights, the structure is very aesthetic, very, um, you know, handsome light. Um, I know people, oh my god, what's he saying? The light, that, that's what I do. I, I love doing it and I love uh, hearing the noises, the, you know, smelling the smells and, you know, seeing the light go from this to crystal clear perfection. Uh, it's what I like to do. So, yes, the inside of this light is very ruggedly handsome. All right, it's beautiful. Uh, but, anyways, um, like I said, this is about a mid level uh, difficulty headlight. If I had to place a one through five, five being the most difficult, one being the most easiest, this is about a three. Uh, this takes a little bit of skill to do and to get 100% on or to get the flawless touch. This light, primarily because those corners and that dip and uh, the roundness, you gotta like, really go smooth with it. If you can kind of tell, I'm being very gentle with this light because not all light, um, you know they're all polycarbonate right but they have uh you know minute uh additions in there and the formulas uh you know and they're they're just made different it's kind of, i always tell people uh headlights are kind of like cheeseburgers metaphorically a cheeseburger is a cheeseburger but how many different ways can you make a cheeseburger there's millions there's thousands of them right it just has a certain basis to be a cheeseburger um, so I explained to people headlights are different not every headlight that you do from year to year or make or model is going to be the same um, you know it's always different uh, you know for instance let's say if you were to do a Kia um, you know, a late model Kia or a, uh, you know, 
European German car, um, you would see that the lights are very dense, very diamond hard, and sometimes it's difficult to do. A lot of people don't want to work on these vehicles. A lot of detailers, a lot of um, headlight specialists, so-called, don't want to deal with these vehicles, and I actually get business from them not wanting it, and then the people call me and ask, do I have a problem working on them? I was like, I have no problem working on them. It might cost you a little bit more, but, you know, I do them. I don't ever turn down anything unless it's just not doable. I actually like a challenge. But anyways, like I said, this would be a three, um, you know, a light like this here that I'm showing you would be a five. I took a picture of this today in traffic. It was just like, man, I kind of dread when this light comes around. I don't know what vehicle it was. It was some kind of a newer Nissan. But uh, these shark tooth type uh, lights are the worst. But anyways, you see that starting with the fresh pad when the, um, you know, on those hard areas. You know, always going to start with the fresh pad. Even, you know, this pad or the discs or whatever you're using. Generally try to get in that area, you know, first to... Make sure, you know, that you're getting it done correctly with a fresh pad. Uh, you don't want to use, you know, the, you know the, the disc after you've done the whole light because then it's less, you know, it's less efficient. You can already see where we're going with this. Uh, you can see through all that muck that it is looking good. And, uh, yeah, you're in for a treat to see the inside of this light. Uh, they're really crazy, really nice looking. Always want to use a clean microfiber towel, preferably a premium. There is a difference. It's a lot softer, a lot thicker, a lot more durable. Uh, using some glass cleaner right here, letting it drip down. Uh, glass cleaner, uh, the liquid is typically better than the foam, in my opinion. The foam gets a little bit messy. This, uh, you know, pulls everything away. Uh, you know, drips down like this, it drips down instead of foam kind of lifts it instead of drips, which when you go to wipe it, it's it's just like, it's just different. I highly prefer the uh, liquid. Um, you can try either one, see what you like, but the liquid is uh, by far better. What you see right here is uh, I'm blowing in between uh, the crevice between the light and the car. Uh, just getting all the water out to, uh, you know, let it dry before I get to that final step. This is the 3M hard lens polish that I'm using. It's designed primarily for headlights and other hard plastics like this. Polycarbonate, acrylics, whatever is designed for it. Uh, you know, using the dab method here with the finesse pad at the end, the orange 3M finesse pad, and my AC Delco 12 volt 3 inch polisher, uh, which is one of the best investments I've ever put in. Um, I have two other ones that I never have to use really. They're uh, fairly new. One's real brand new in a case, and the other one uh, is different brands, might I add. Uh, but the reason why I stopped using them and I got this one is simply because the other two are some china made ones or i ordered them from china or whatnot and i try to call their customer service and did all this stuff and they refused to sell batteries separate so why i have two is because i bought the first one and couldn't get replacement batteries and i was like what kind of freaking company does this right so I bought the second one just to get the other batteries. So I have one that was highly, you know, never even touched. And then I saw this one here and was like, well, dang, you know, I could just buy five, six, seven batteries and I have to worry about it. So that's what I did. I have about five batteries for this. Uh, actually, six batteries because they come in uh, packs of two normally. They come in packs of one, but I do buy packs of two just because it's a better kickback. Uh, but I have about six batteries for this, so you know I can go all day with this, this one. And I keep one of the other ones in the trunk just uh, for backup. You never know, one day this might blow up or something. But I've been using this one for over two years, uh, quite uh, vigorously, two years. 
Um, but I mean, it, it'll probably last forever because you only use it for this step. And I do use it for other things that I do, you know, uh, oxidation removal, scratch removals and stuff like that. But basically it's really just quick, uh, quick little spurts of use. But look at this headlight. You see that? That's already, that's, that's money already. Look at that. Nice. We'll wait till the end. And you see what I'm doing here, even though there's no real wind, I blow off everything and I wipe off about a foot around the light and I blow off the light and I blow off about a foot around the light just in case the wind spurt comes or whatever when I'm spraying this because there's a 30 second window with this stuff anywhere depending on what time of year, it's about a 30 second to you know maybe 50 second window where something can fly into it and mess it up that's why this product mcguire's headlight coating is such a good product for um you know mobile services this is what i do i go to other people's places and i take care of their stuff um so you never know the conditions uh, and you never know when the wind's gonna hit or whatever this stuff dries so fast you know damn near even any time in the rain and the wind you can find a 30 second window you know to cure and it, it cures in about a minute anywhere between a minute and maybe three minutes um not cured but uh seals on the light meaning that it's you know nothing's gonna stick to it or fly into it and cause orange peel or hair sticking to it or bugs sticking to it or anything like, anything like that it's gonna form a crust in about 30 seconds Okay, that's why it's such a good product, uh, especially for a mobile service like myself. Also, it dries to the touch in about three minutes. Fully dries to the touch in about three minutes. And it will cure in about 16 hours on this headlight in a 80 degree heat. So it is uh, an awesome product for somebody who's doing headlights on the road or anywhere out. And you know, you can do it anywhere. I do it in all forms of weather. I do it when it's raining, I do it in the sun, I do it uh, when it's windy. Believe it or not, wind is the worst one, uh, just because you don't, you have, you have to find that 30 second window. Got my fans on it, forced air drying. It uh, cuts the time in half. Uh, here we go, look at that. Wow, that's a work of art very nice car you know they wanted excellence on it and you know like i said this was a loved one uh who passed away and i take those things serious so i you know i really had to get down i mean i treat all customers and all vehicles the same but you know when you when it when it's game time it's game time you got to put on your game face and get it done look at that once again that's an infinity g37s 2013 flawless perfect Super smooth. Look at that. Even in that crevice, top notch quality. It's never hit or miss with this, uh, you know, this formula. It's never hit or miss. It's always hit. Always hit. My percentile is about 99.9% .9 success on every headlight. Please like and subscribe. Uh, appreciate you viewers out there. Um, you know, appreciate you. Oh, yeah. I owe you guys to see this vehicle. Here you go. G37S Infinity. Super nice. Good color choice. Had black leather interior. Check this out. Like I said, I do other stuff uh, besides just headlights. Headlight is my passion and my number one function. But I do all the other stuff and get down just as good. Thanks for watching.